This is a special report from ABC News Digital. Hello, I'm Ty Hernandez in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report. The calendar says winter, but it's a big day for the boys of spring. The Baseball Writers Association of America has elected three former players into the Baseball Hall of Fame, all on their first ballots. I'm joined now by Tim Kirkjian of ESPN to break it all down, who made it, who didn't, and why. Hello, Tim. Let's start with Greg Maddox, first-time ballot lock of all the incredible numbers. What stands out to you about his career? Well, to me, he's one of the six greatest pitchers of all time. He won 15 or more games in 17 consecutive seasons. That's a record. He made 25 or more starts in 20 consecutive seasons. That ties for a record. He is, for me, the greatest control pitcher of this era and maybe any era, and he is certainly the smartest pitcher that I have ever seen in my life, and I've been covering baseball for 33 years. And we've got Tom Glavin in the mix as well, heading to Cooperstown. Do you think he merited a first ballot vote? Yes, he deserved to be in on the first ballot. He won 300 games. He won 20 or more games five times. He won two Cy Young Awards. He made 10 all-star teams, and he taught all pitchers, especially left-handers, that left-handers are allowed to throw a change-up to a left-handed hitter. That's what he changed. All right, let's talk about Frank Thomas. The big hurt is also making it in his first year of eligibility. Frank Thomas is one of the great sluggers of all time. By my count, he's one of the five best first basemen who ever lived. And his OPS, that is slugging plus on-base percentage, is right there with Stan Musial, who by any statistical measure is one of the ten greatest hitters of all time. Frank Thomas's first eight years in the major leagues were just stunning. It was like Jimmy Fox come back to life. You know, so many of these guys are really deserving. So the controversy is often surrounding who didn't make the cut. There's a lot of chatter this afternoon about Mike Piazza. The stats are there. He's pretty uh, roundly regarded as the best hitting catcher, uh, hitter catcher ever, one of the best right-handed hitters, period. Why did he not make it? I do not understand the lack of votes for Mike Piazza. There is no doubt. He is the greatest hitting catcher of all time. And even though he wasn't a particularly good defensive catcher, he wasn't as bad as everyone thinks. He is being kept to 62%, in my opinion, because there is a suspicion of steroid use. And as a voter, I'm not going to keep anyone out based on a suspicion. To me, he should already be in the Hall of Fame. What about Craig Biggio, 20-year veteran with the Houston Astros? How close was he? Well, he missed by two votes, which is so unfortunate for a guy who has 3,000 hits. He had more doubles than Hank Aaron. He had more extra base hits than Mickey Mantle. He played in almost as many winning games as Frank Robinson. He should be in. He should have been in on the first ballot, but he'll get in next year having missed by only two votes. And let's talk about pitcher Jack Morris, another contender. His 15th and final year on the writer's ballot, he didn't make it either. Right. In fact, his vote total dropped significantly in his last year. So he will have the distinction of having the most votes or the highest vote total ever of any player not to get into the Hall of Fame on the writer's ballot. And I think it's unfortunate because even though his numbers don't stack up with a lot of other Hall of Fame pitchers, he was the best pitcher uh, in the game for a 12-year period, at least had the most wins, and I think he should be in. Now, Tim, you talked about suspicion of steroid use and, and perhaps that not being good enough to exclude someone, but last year you and your federal writers voted no one into the hall. Many considered that a statement about the game's steroid era. So do you see Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa ever making it into Cooperstown? Well, Sosa certainly isn't going to make it in, and neither is Mark McGuire, given the vote totals where they are right now. And Rafael Palmero, he is off the ballot officially, having not gotten 5% of the vote. And as for Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds, they took a major step backwards in my mind. I thought there might be a slight spike in the voting for them, for people who wanted to punish them, not voting for them on the first ballot last year. But both of their vote totals went down this year, and that is a very bad sign. You can make it to the Hall of Fame getting 36% of the vote in your first year, but you have to start going up immediately. And Clemens and Bonds went down, however slightly, but they did go down. 
Let's talk about Pete Rose, all-time hit leader, but for so many people, uh, his being banned from the game of baseball for betting uh, eclipses that. Do you think he deserves to be kept out of Cooperstown, period? Well, Pete Rose is not going into Cooperstown anytime soon. His only hope, I believe, is when a new commissioner is named, he might open up the Pete Rose case and say, all right, uh, it's time to do something with this guy. Put him on the ballot for the first time or put him in on some special uh, dispensation type of situation. But I cannot see Pete Rose getting on the writer's ballot, and even if he did, I don't think he would get the requisite 75 percent. And if that vote came from the current Hall of Famers, they wouldn't vote for him either, because according to most of the ones that I've spoken to, he violated the number one rule, he bet on baseball, and you simply don't do that when you're in a baseball uniform. All right. Well, we've been talking a lot about those who didn't make it, but congratulations again to those who did, and our thanks to Tim Kirkjian of ESPN. It's going to be a busy day for you on ESPN and ESPN.com. This has been an ABC News Digital Special Report. Baseball's newest Hall of Famers. The vote totals are in. I'm Ty Hernandez in New York.